And the Republican Party looks like an embarrassment. Do you Why do you think that in the 20, the 20 that are doing this, they have done a good job. They need to keep talking and then they need to do what every single successful person does. You take your deal, you take your win, you take your victory lap and let's move on and let's get on with business. Wow. Rare agreement between President Biden and Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, both labeling the mutiny among the House Republicans as embarrassing. This morning, there is still no Speaker of the House. Good morning and welcome to Morning Joe. It is Thursday, January 5th, along with Joe, Willie and me. We have congressional investigations reporter for The Washington Post, Jackie Alemany, White House editor for Politico, Sam Stein, the founder of the conservative website, The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes, and the host of Way Too Early, White House Bureau Chief at Politico, Jonathan Lemire. So still no speaker. I feel like what we saw yesterday, and we'll talk more about this and right. show some of the uh, members of Congress speaking on the floor, but it, we're beginning to really see Trump's irrelevance play out with even some of the staunchest Trumpers right. kind of blowing them off. But secondly, no speaker, no swearing ins, no House right now. Is is it beyond embarrassing? Is there a danger to this? No. I mean, there's a danger for the Republican Party. Uh, and it, it really underlines what a lot of people already thought about the Republican Party, the most important voters in America, the swing voters, the independents, the Republicans, former Republicans in suburbs and places like uh, Atlanta uh, and uh, around Philadelphia, people that were Republicans their whole life who said this party's whacked out. <clears throat> I can't vote for them anymore. They really are surrounded by, you know, insurrectionists, weirdos and freaks. And so this underlines that. So there's a great danger for Republicans. As far as the rest of the country goes, this too will pass. Okay. As, as, as my mother always uh, said, you, you know, there have been some House, uh, U.S. House uh, uh, sessions that have started. Like, for instance, in the 70s and the 80s would start in the middle of January. There have been some even this decade <clears throat> uh, that I think started... Uh, in, in, you know, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th. Uh, it's early in January. That's not the problem. I will, yeah. I will say, I, I, I spoke uh, with a foreign leader yesterday um, who said, what in the world is going on? <laughs> yeah. I said, baby, this is democracy. You, you don't have to worry about it where you are, but we worry about it, and this actually works. It's messy, but it's one of the reasons that we've survived for 230, 240 years. Sometimes it gets ugly, but we air our grievances in public and, and very transparent, and this is, this is good. I, I think, Willie, I... I think this is good for Americans to see. There's, there's no, there's no harm for, you know, Americans. There's no harm for American democracy. Now, let's, let's, let's be very clear about it. When you have the Wall Street Journal editorial page leading for a second day criticizing these Republicans, these insurrectionists, and 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 others, uh, saying who's crazy enough to be speaker, uh, and they're writing the problem with any GOP leader, leader facing today is that too many Republicans don't really want to hold and keep political power. They're much more comfortable in opposition of the mi minority, which is easier because no hard decisions or compromises are necessary. You can rage against the swamp without having to fix it. Now, that is an overgeneralization. There are some members that are interested in some pretty significant rule changes. We'll be talking to some of those throughout the day. But still, uh, this is uh, uh, not bad for America in the long run, but certainly damaging to the Republican brand. Yeah, and a few things strike you. We are exactly this morning where we were when we sat here yesterday morning at 6 a.m., which is nowhere, which is three more votes, uh, three more times Kevin McCarthy didn't clear the 218 hurdle. He's negotiating behind the scenes. It also strikes you now how spilling out into public is the disdain and the contempt that some members of the Republican caucus have for these 20 others and have apparently have had for some time. You have someone like Congressman Dan Crenshaw of Texas calling them losers and enemies and clowns and everything else and saying, they are making us look bad in public. And then, as Mika referred to earlier, the influence of Donald Trump is just not there. Wow. It's background noise at this wow. point. Wow. He's putting out statements on his down market social media site, trying to exert some influence. <laughs> you have people like Lauren Boebert going on and saying, yeah. yes, he's my favorite president, but I don't care what he says right now. I'm not voting for Kevin.
Kevin McCarthy. So yeah, that's, there is a lot. Wow. Uh, there is a lot at play here right now. You know, Willie, it, it's interesting that, that yesterday when Jonathan Lemire gave us the information that, and by the way, we're going to talk to Jonathan about uh, the Dever signing in Boston. Yes. Finally, something for he and Barnacle finally. to smile about. Barnacle <laughs> said he could finally sleep last night. But but yesterday when Jonathan gave us the breaking news that Donald Trump had just posted on Truth Social uh, that that people should support McCarthy. Let, let's take the win. Let's move forward. I will say, you're proving once again that I'm always wrong after <laughs> I'm always wrong about Donald Trump, proving that once again when no. Carville said, oh, it's not going to make any difference at all. He done. He cooked at the Louisiana <laughs> turkey. I was like, well, I'm not so sure about that. And uh, sure enough, I mean, Lauren Boebert goes on the floor and basically says, yeah, no, nah, I'm not, not going to listen to you. Other, other of the, the most MAGA members actually tweeting things that mo mock Donald Trump. This is, and again, and, and we'll talk to Charlie about this in a second, because Charlie knows this. This doesn't just happen in a vacuum. It's not like Lauren Boebert and these other Republicans said, well, today I am going to show courage and I'm going to separate myself from Donald Trump regardless of what my voters think. No, this is happening because the voters aren't calling saying like they did in the past. Right. You follow Donald Trump. Willie, those calls are not coming because Republican rank and file members at the end understand it is Donald Trump that has put them in this place. Yeah, and some of the members, like you just said, who have been the most loyal to Donald Trump, his foot soldiers pushing every conspiracy theory he wanted pushed, going along for the ride, tweeting back at him and saying, sad, was the quote from one member yep. to Donald Trump about his lack of influence on this process. Um, he has really been pushed to the wayside, Jonathan Lemire, in, in this instance anyway. It doesn't mean he doesn't have influence on the party, but they're just not listening to him. He has said now more clearly than he said a couple of days ago, Kevin McCarthy's the guy. Some of these other people you're talking about will have their day, but it's not now vote for Kevin. And now six times those 19, 20 members have gone out and said, we're not doing it. Yeah, a couple of Republicans I spoke to last night were really struck. They think this is the first time that the word loser is being attached to Trump. That, as Joe has details uh, frequently, you know, he's on a losing streak in terms of elections, but it's this one. The 2022 midterms is the first time where he's really being blamed. Like, you cost us stuff because it was your candidates who have gone down to defeat the chaos you created. And his evolution here is interesting uh, on McCarthy, where, you know, McCarthy begged for his forgiveness after January 6th. Trump kind of dangled the endorsement uh, in front of him for a while. Finally came in, but sort of, you know, lukewarm. But in recent weeks, picked it up, was on the phone, saying McCarthy should be our guy. And then yesterday, with that Truth Social post, very down market, uh, saying, look, he should be speaker. It's time to take the win, set aside the fighting. But even by last night, he posted again. He said to Republicans, look, we need to come to a deal. But he didn't talk about McCarthy. So again, he seems to be backing off a little bit here, uh, afraid perhaps of being associated with another failed effort, even as McCarthy's allies think they are making progress. It's been a debacle. And Trump's contributed to it. And it shows, at least for the moment, his grip on the Republican Party, even among his most fervent acolytes, has weakened.